A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 1 through 33. Now in Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the cohort called the Italica, devout and God-fearing along with his whole household, who used to give alms generously to the Jewish people and pray to God constantly. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he saw plainly in a vision an angel of God come into him and say to him, Cornelius. He looked intently at him and seized with fear, said, What is it, sir? He said to him, Your prayers and almsgiving have ascended as a memorial offering before God. Now send some men to Joppa, and summon one Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with another Simon, a tanner, who has a house by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had left, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from his staff, explained everything to them, and sent them to Joppa. The next day, while they were on their way and nearing the city, Peter went up to the roof, terrace to pray at about noontime. He was hungry and wished to eat, and while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all the earth's four-legged animals and reptiles and the birds of the sky. A voice said to him, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But Peter said, Certainly not, sir, for never have I eaten anything profane and unclean. The voice spoke to him again a second time. What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times. And then the object was taken up into the sky. When, while Peter was in doubt about the meaning of the vision he had seen, the men sent by Cornelius asked for Simon's house and arrived at the entrance. They called out inquiring whether Simon, who is isn't called Peter, was staying there. As Peter was wondering, was pondering the vision, the spirit said to him, there are three men here looking for you, so get up Go downstairs and accompany them without hesitation, because I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason you, for your being here? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, respected by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited them in and showed them hospitality. The next day, he got up and went with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went with him. On the following day, he entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. While he conversed with him, <clears throat> he went in and found many people gathered together and said to them, you know that it is unlawful for a Jewish man to associate with or visit a Gentile, but God has shown me that I should not call any person profane or unclean. And that is why I came without objection when sent for. May I ask then why you summoned me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago, at this hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, I was at prayer in my house when suddenly a man in dazzling robes stood before me and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your almsgiving remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter. 
He is a guest in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and you were kind enough to come. Now, therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to listen to all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Here we see the story of Peter preaching to Gentiles and preaching to Gentiles who would not need to be circumcised. They would not need to follow the Jewish law. And so God uses a joint pair of visions, a vision to Cornelius and a vision to Peter. This is similar to God's joint visions to Paul and Ananias, a vision to Peter, to Paul to wait for Ananias, a vision to Ananias to go to Paul. And so Peter will preach to Cornelius, the centurion. He's a a military man in charge of a hundred soldiers, a centurion. He will preach to him and his whole household. They will become Christian. They will be baptized and they will not become Jewish. Now, they'll be called followers of the way or followers of Jesus. The word Christian comes later, comes in the city of Antioch. But we see that Peter preaches to them out of obedience to God. Now, there's an earlier part where God allows Peter all of these unclean animals and says, take and eat. And what we'll see is that eventually there will be an allowance to eat of all animals, to not have to follow kosher laws. Some say that it it started here. Some say it starts a little bit later at the Council of Jerusalem. Now, Adam and Eve, they were given of any fruit of the tree. They were allowed to eat of any fruit in the Garden of Eden, except those trees in the middle of the garden. The tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They fail, and so then they have to move to farming. They go from scavenging, hunter-gatherer to, except not hunting, to farming, cultivating the land. Then, in the time of Noah, the time of Noah, after Noah leaves the ark, this ark which has all the animals at peace, which is kind of like a new Eden, a new beginning, after he leaves that, God says, you may eat of clean animals. And then we see kind of a definition of what clean animals are uh, with Moses more specifically. And so we have this idea that at a new covenant, you have a new meal. Now, in all of these times, it's very explicit that blood is forbidden. So blood is forbidden even to shed blood at the time of Adam. It is forbidden to eat of the blood at the time of Noah. And even at the Council of Jerusalem, which we'll read about later in the Acts, they talk about do not have an animal that has been strangled. Make sure that that you avoid the blood. Now, at the same time, We have Jesus who says to us, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And so at the same time where there is this prohibition of blood, there is this command to drink blood. At the same time where there was this prohibition from eating certain animals, there was this command to eat human flesh. 
This blood and this flesh is Christ, mystically present in the Eucharist. And so it seems that all of these prohibitions, all of these dietary laws, were to prepare us to understand that we need Christ. They were to prepare us that the fruit of the tree of life is Christ himself. 